Welcome to our show, Vincent Van Gogh, infusing life and heart into each brushstroke. Part one of three. Vincent Van Gogh is one of the most prominent post-impressionist painters, and is generally regarded as the greatest Dutch painter since Rembrandt van Rijn. After deciding to be an artist at the age of 27, he produced nearly 900 paintings and more than 1,000 works on paper in the short 10-year span of his artistic career. While the impressionists tried to achieve synthetic depictions of their subjects according to what appeared before their eyes, Van Gogh stepped further away from artistic conventions by expressing on canvas the emotions and states of mind that the subjects evoked, as he wrote in a letter to his brother Theo. Real painters do not paint things as they are; they paint them as they themselves feel them to be. Through his arbitrary use of color, emphatic, unrestrained brushstrokes, and contoured forms, along with the dynamic relationships expressed among his subjects, his emotions, and the viewer's reactions, Van Gogh had an enormous influence on Fauvism, Expressionism, and Modernism, and continues to inspire artists up to the present day. The powerful emotions. And pictorial language of Van Gogh's art touched people profoundly. His works have also been highly sought after by art collectors since the latter half of the 20th century. And paintings such as Vase with 15 Sunflowers, Irises, and Portrait of Dr. Gachet have continually been setting price records at auctions. Yet sadly, Van Gogh constantly struggled with poverty while he was alive. Over time, however, he did become fully recognized for his artistic genius. And on June second, nineteen seventy-three, the Van Gogh Museum, honoring the iconic artist, opened in Amsterdam after ten years of preparation. Vincent Willem Van Gogh was born on March 30th, 1853, in Groot Zundert, the Netherlands. His father, Theodorus Van Gogh, was a minister of the Dutch Reformed Church, and his mother, Anna Cornelia Carpentus, was a religious woman from a bookbinding family in The Hague. Vincent was the first surviving child among six siblings and was named after his grandfather. Vincent was taught by his mother and a governess when he was young, and was encouraged to draw alongside his mother, an amateur artist herself. Once he reached school age, Vincent was sent to the village school, followed by four years at various schools away from home. In 1869, after an austere and cold and sterile youth, as described by Van Gogh himself. One of his art dealer uncles helped Vincent obtain an apprenticeship at the Hague branch of the Coupier and C art dealership, the same starting point for his younger brother Theo, who later became the main source of Vincent's financial and moral support. After completing his training in 1873, Vincent began working for the same art dealership's London branch. Although he enjoyed a happy, youthful, and successful life in London, Vincent experienced his first unrequited love there with Eugenie Loyer, his landlady's daughter. After his profession of love to Eugenie was rejected, Vincent became increasingly isolated and interested in religion. His family tried to help by transferring him to the dealership's Paris branch. However, by April 1876, he was dismissed for not being enthusiastic about his work. After unsuccessfully working at several small jobs, Vincent's desire to serve humanity and his strong interest in religion led him to pursue a clerical life. In January 1879, he began working as a temporary preacher at Petit Vosmont in Bourgogne, an impoverished coal mining region in Belgium. Due to his deep empathy and compassion, 
He gave away his worldly possessions to the poor, shared his food with the needy, gave the lodgings arranged for him as a missionary by the church to a homeless person, and slept on straw in a hut. Despite Vincent having earned the nickname the Christ of the Coal Mine, the church authorities discontinued his term for following Christian doctrine too literally and having failed to maintain the dignity of the priesthood. Vincent stayed with the community for a few more months until October 1880. The crush of his earnest longing to serve humanity as a clergyman sent him into depression. He found consolation in art and took up drawing to record the people and their harsh living conditions in charcoal sketches. Meanwhile, he also discovered the solace that art could bring. Art is to console those who are broken by life and leads to God. By then, he realized that being an artist was his real vocation. Bright viewers, we'll now pause for a moment to hear a brief message. We'll return shortly. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to a show on the life and work of the extraordinary Dutch painter Vincent van Gogh. Upon Theo's recommendation and with his financial help, Vincent moved to Brussels in late 1880 and briefly studied art with the Dutch artist Willem Roelofs as well as anatomy and the rules of modeling and perspective at the Académie Royale des Beaux-Arts of Brussels. From then on, Theo, who understood and believed in Vincent, assumed the role of Vincent's financial benefactor, art promoter and advisor. Theo had been close to Vincent since childhood, and the two brothers cherished a lifelong friendship. Their correspondence from 1872, when Vincent began his apprenticeship at The Hague, until the end of Vincent's life, especially the 600-plus diary-like letters from Vincent, offers a rich and precious record of the artist's emotions, beliefs, physical and mental states, and daily activities, along with his thoughts and theories on art. In the spring of 1881, Vincent returned home to stay with his parents for several months. During this period, he fell in love with his widowed cousin Cornelia Adriana Vostriker, known as Key. When Vincent confessed his love for her and proposed marriage, she refused him, but he persevered in hope that with time his love might change her mind. Later that year, Vincent visited Key's family in Amsterdam and reaffirmed his love for her. Key and her parents' refusal pushed Vincent further down into despair over his desire for familial affection. At the end of 1881, Vincent's second cousin, Anton Mauve, an eminent painter of the Hague School, accepted him as a student. Mr. Mauve introduced Vincent to painting in watercolors and oils and helped him set up a studio. However, Mr. Mauve's tutelage ended abruptly, perhaps due to his disapproval of Vincent's relationship with Miss Klasina Maria Hornig, known as Sien, a sorrowful woman with an unfortunate past. They were lovers, and Sien modeled for many of Vincent's works. However, their relationship did not work out, and Vincent left Sien in late 1883. Although his termination by Mr. Moff saddened him, Vincent's reverence for and gratitude towards him was unchanged. On March 30th, 1888, upon hearing the news of Mr. Moff's passing, Vincent dedicated one of his most famous paintings, Pink Peach Trees, also known as Souvenir de Mauve, to his memory. During most of 1884 and 1885, Vincent stayed with his family after they moved to Nuneninen, the Netherlands. He feverishly drew and painted figures, still lives, and landscapes, and grew more assured about his work. Throughout his decade-long artistic career, nature and honest members of the working class with which Vincent identified remained two of his fondest subjects. He once said, 
I work as diligently on my canvases as the laborers do in their fields. The Potato Eaters is one of the most representative works from the period. Vincent produced the painting between April and May 1885 after numerous sketches and preparatory drafts. The painting is composed of five figures sitting around a small table sharing the hard-earned meal in a simple, primitive setting. The entire painting is governed by a dark, earthy tone, a typical color treatment of Vincent's early period. Coarse application of paint, incorrect proportions, unrefined poses and figure arrangements in addition to a depressive mood reflect the harsh realities of peasant life. Vincent portrays a family that have tilled the earth themselves with these hands they are putting in the dish, that they have thus honestly earned their food. The pictorial language expresses Vincent's extraordinary empathy and earnest feelings toward his subject and denotes his personal commentary on it. This, Vincent's first large-scale multi-figure work, is regarded as one of his masterpieces and is now under the care of the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. Vincent was pleased with the outcome of the potato eaters and in November 1885 packed it with his belongings in the only suitcase he brought to Antwerp where he enrolled in the Antwerp Academy. Although Vincent rebelled against the Academy's doctrine of classical beauty, he benefited significantly from his stay in Antwerp. Vincent frequented the city's museums and churches to study Peter Paul Rubens' work and also discovered Japanese prints, which had a lasting influence on his work. Disagreeing with the Academy's rigid teaching methods, he left Antwerp at the beginning of March 1886 and headed to Paris, a turning point in Vincent's artistic development. Gracious viewers, thank you for your company today 